is Captain Chaudhary. Today I am going to talk about salvage. What is salvage? Salvage in a general understanding is a salving of a property. In respect of a ship, the salvage means salving of the ship or the property which is contained therein. So property might be the cargo, it might be the stores etc. Similarly, if the ship is in danger or peril, if the ship is conveyed to a place of safety, that also will be called as salvage. So in respect of ship, can we say that uh, salvage is a process of changing the status of the vessel from in peril or in danger to in safety and that safety is defined. Like for example, in uh, LOF, uh, box number three talks about a place of safety. The place of safety is defined. It might be like uh, mm, uh, east of uh, longitude uh, 92 or it might be something like outer anchorage of Mumbai Harbor. So uh, the place of safety is defined in the LOF form. So if you can change the status of the vessel from the place of peril to place of safety, that also would be called as a salvage. So salvage can be of property, salvage can be of the ship. Now salvage convention 1989 governs most of these uh, uh, contracts of salvage typically uh, represented by LOF, Lloyd's Open Form. Now what is the difference between the towage and salvage? In towage you will describe the ship, you will describe the problems on the ship, you will describe the task to be undertaken, like for example, a ship is to be taken from Mumbai to Goa. You describe the ship, the hull is intact, right? the machinery not working, right? and the ship is in ballast. There are no other problems which need to be disclosed at this uh, stage which will determine the terms of uh, towage contract. And the money to be paid, money that is required to be paid for this task is decided in beginning. So there is two ways contract. Whereas salvage, the money, or as we say in any uh, contract or agreement, the consideration, the consideration to be paid for the services which are provided, the money or the consideration is not decided. It will be decided by 1989 salvage convention. So that is what is salvage. So if both are agreement. The towage is also an agreement. Salvage is also an agreement. But in the salvage agreement, the money is not pre-decided. The money will be decided after the uh, task is over with the uh, 10 conditions which are stated in Article 13 of 1989 Convention. Those 10 points from A to J, they will decide like how much reward has to be paid. So can we say in general, that if there is no success, total or partial. Partial means you have at least solved cargo or stores or things like that. And total means you have solved the cargo, stores, etc. along with the ship. So can we say if the success is not partial or total, Article 13 is out. Article 13 is based only on the fact that there is some success. So there are various points on which the salvage amount will be decided. Now this uh, uh, Lloyd's open form is functional since 1908 and after that there are about 12 revisions which have taken place to this form and those revisions are because of the various changing conditions say for example environment, the requirement of salvers etc. So uh, uh, how do you find uh, how many revisions have taken place and uh, what is the latest uh, LOF on the right hand side bottom of the front page you are provided with these dates okay Lloyd's open form Lloyd's open form has got uh, uh, various boxes if you see the front page uh, very important box number two what is to be served the property the store the bunkers and uh, uh, the cargo and the ship of course the property to be solved will be indicated in box number two. Box number three, as I said, the place of safety. Box number seven is very important and that is invoking of uh, scopic. 
invoking of scopic has to be positive invoking of scopic cannot be just ticking that box that's not enough the salver has to positively imply that uh, he wants to go for scopic positive indication would also be supplemented with the communications like in today's world the communication is extremely efficient at any given time you can reach any corner of the world so uh, just by ticking it's not good enough you have to positively imply that uh, you want to undertake the scopic but the condition on the other side condition on the other side is uh, after uh, the salver has given his uh, intentions of invoking the scopic within two working days the ship owner must deposit $3 million in two working days in the bank as guarantee. <clears throat> now if this guarantee is not submitted in the bank by the ship owner or his P&I club, then the salver has option to cancel the scopic and fall back on special compensation by article 14 in Salvage Convention 1989. Please remember Article 14 is the very important article in Salvage Convention 89. It was not there in Salvage Convention 1910, which was uh, a convention before 89's convention. Now, one of the main differences between the Salvage Convention 1910 and 1989 is the environment was not talked about in 1910. So, environment related problem that the salver may not be paid anything for his efforts is ruled out by article 14 of salvage convention now article 14 of salvage convention uh, has certain uh, conditions has certain methods of calculating that we will see afterwards now one other difference between the two conventions is 1910 uh, convention had a provision of merit salvage but there is no merit salvage in 1989 convention amount to be paid has to be decided only after the salvage is over. LSAB or Lloyd's Salvage Arbitration Branch is the administrative head of the salvage. Infrastructure is created by them and various administrative tasks are undertaken by LSAB. Now let us try and understand what are the responsibilities of salver. Now what salver has to do? Salver has a responsibility to undertake the salvage operation with due care. And while he is doing these operations, while he is undertaking these operations, it is very important that he takes due care of environment. That means he makes all his efforts to minimize or neutralize the environmental damage or environmental pollution. In undertaking the salvage, if he feels that more ships or other salvage authorities should be involved he should accept them or in a situation of salvage where ship owner feels that he should take the help from other salvage authorities other salvage organizations then the uh, uh, the salver should take their help you know without prejudice but later on if it is decided that the uh, salvage help was not required to be taken then uh, his amount of salvage will not be prejudiced. It will not be divided. Let us also understand what are the duties of ship owner. The duties of ship owner is to provide all the cooperation that is needed by the salver. And while he is cooperating with the salver, it is very important that ship owner uh, takes a good interest in preventing or minimizing the damage to the environment. Right? The environmental pollution is a very important concern in 1989 convention and also when the ship is taken to the place of safety except the delivery right that means uh, the salver should not unnecessarily be held in the place of safety on account of anything because there are a lot of expenses involved for example the hiring of pilot hiring of divers hiring of pumps hiring of tuts etc so uh, it is the responsibility of the ship owner when the ship is taken to the safety and the salver is no more required to accept the re-delivery. Article 12 is condition of reward. It says that whenever the operations conducted by the salver have given useful results, they deserve the reward. right? And they will 
deserve the reward, they will get the reward in spite of the fact that the ship owner and the salver are from the same company. As we understand that special compensation is a safety net that is provided to the salver, how much he'll be paid will be decided by two factors. One is out of pocket expenses and other one is fair rate. There are two conditions which need to be satisfied which are associated with uh, special compensation. One is environmental concern and other one is coastal consideration. This restriction is not there for scopic. Scopic may there is no coastal consideration, there is no environmental consideration. But here you have these two considerations. If they are not satisfied, then the salver may not get anything. Apart from this, we must also understand that the a special compensation count or the meter starts right from the beginning. One does not have to wait for any invoking or things like that. It is calculated right from the beginning. Now special compensation which you get may be increased by 30% if there is a, a mitigation or minimizing or reducing of environmental damage by the salver and he might lose the entire special compensation or he might lose the special compensation partly on various factors for example misconduct for example uh, uh, not able to mitigate the pollution because of negligence etc but uh, the idea is the special compensation what we are trying to understand here is can be increased by 30 percent and the factor is environment and when a tribunal is involved, the tribunal may increase the special compensation up to a maximum of 100% of the original special compensation that is calculated. Article 16 deals with the salvage of persons. Like no salvage is due from the persons whose lives are saved, number one. And number two, in case a person has participated in salving, and salving of the human lives, then he definitely deserves a fair share of the salvage money. The special compensation as well as copic are the ways, are the safety nets for the salver. We must also try to understand the difference between the two. First of all, uh, as I told you before, that special compensation starts right at the beginning of the salvage operation. You don't wait for anything. Whereas scopic, for scopic, unless the salver invokes the scopic and the ship owner deposits $3 million in two working days, uh, that means uh, the actual invoking of the scopic does not take place, the scopic meter does not start. Now you can, uh, as a salver, he can invoke scopic, it's not necessarily right at the beginning, he can invoke the scopic anytime. Uh, during the salvage. He can invoke it uh, say just a few days before the salvage operation is going to get over. Now in case of Scopic, the ship owner may appoint SCR. SCR means Special uh, Casualty Representative. But that is not necessary in Special Compensation. You don't have to appoint uh, SCR. But here in Scopic, uh, the ship owner may uh, go for a Special Compensation uh, special casualty representative who will uh, monitor the salvage and who would also do uh, the required reporting. Now method of computation of uh, a scopic is by the tariff that is uh, given in the appendix and in case of special compensation I told you it is out of pocket expenses and the fair rate. Now in case of uh, uh, Special compensation, I told you, there are two stages of increase. Whereas in case of uh, Scopic, there is an uplift or bonus of 25% over the tariff rates. There are two options allowed in Scopic. One is increasing by 10% of out-of-pocket expense or increasing by 25% over the tariff rates. I also told you that uh, in special compensation there are two conditions to be satisfied. One is environmental protection and other one is coastal consideration. Whereas there are no such restriction in scopic. Now we will uh, try to understand two situations. In special compensation what happens if article 13 award is more than special compensation. 
The answer is, in that case, don't talk about special compensation. If Article 13 gives you more than special compensation, don't talk about special compensation. And Article 13 amount that is to be paid to the salver will be paid by all the parties concerned. That means the ship owner as well as the cargo interests. Right? So that is sufficient for the salver. Don't talk about the special compensation. Right? There is one other golden rule. That if scopic is being given to the ship, don't talk about special compensation. That means when scopic is incorporated, special compensation is not to be considered. Now, what happens in this situation? When Article 13 award is more than scopic. Now, that means the salver has invoked the scopic and Article 13 amount is big. Very big. It might be a loaded tanker that is solved. And... Uh, Salver just to play safe. He doesn't want to take undue risks. So what he does is he goes for scopic also but it seems You will have to pay something you will have to sacrifice something if you are going for scopic if you are ensuring that you will get something right, so let us say that uh, The article 13 amount or reward is 10,000 units and scopic is 1,000 units Right. So in case the salver does not go for scopic, he would get entire 10,000 units upon success. Right. With the principle no cure, no pay. Right. You have achieved success. You have, uh, you are able to solve the entire property, the ship and the cargo. Right. So you get a very big amount from article 13, say 10,000 units and scoping was, scopic was 1,000 units. What is the difference? Difference is 9,000 units. 9,000 multiplied by uh, 0.75. So I think six, uh, 6,750 I think. So 6,750 uh, plus 1,000 which is of scopic. That is 7,750 will be paid by the uh, stakeholders. That means the ship owner as well as the cargo interest and then separately scopic is not paid by anybody only thing is the difference between the article 13 amount and scopic amount is discounted by uh, 25 percent right instead of getting 10,000 the salver now gets 7,750 units right he doesn't get entire 10,000 units so sometimes the salver sometimes they ask you or sometimes uh, you may be asked or somebody wonders why uh, if the scopic is sure shot guarantee of getting some amount why should salver not go for scopic in certain situation he will not go for scopic in certain situations because uh, probably the weather is good probably is 100 percent sure that he will be able to solve the property so he does not go for scopic because he does not want to discount uh, any uh, salvage remuneration right so if he does not go for scopic he'll surely get 10,000 units in case there is success but uh, if he has gone for scopic the difference of article 13 and article 14 I'm sorry the difference of article 13 and scopic will be discounted by 25 percent I hope it is clear let's consider the other situation where uh, special compensation or scopic is more than article 13 so when special compensation is more than uh, article 13 what happens actually special compensation is on the account of ship owner normally but when special compensation is more than article 13 right then article 13 amount is paid by all the stakeholders that is ship owner as well as cargo interest and whatever is overflow whatever is the balance that means whatever is a special compensation minus article 13 reward that will be played that will be paid exclusively by the ship owner or his p &I club same thing will happen in case of scopic if the scopic amount is more than article 13 article 13 is paid by all the stakeholders that is the ship owner and cargo interest and the difference that is the overflow of the scopic is paid only by the ship owner or his p &I club uh, one non-technical difference can be uh, uh, special compensation has got six paragraphs whereas uh, uh, scopic 
has got uh, 16 sub clauses, 3 appendices and 2 codes of conduct. Article 13, Salvage Convention 1989. The most important factor of course is the success. So it is also in uh, respect of deciding what is the reward, the most important factor would be the value of the salved property. What all things you have salved because your article 13 reward will be given on the basis of what whatever you have salved it cannot be more than that value so uh, what is the value of salved property is the most important factor now second thing uh, they have introduced environment as i said in salvage convention 1989 the second point you should remember is skill and effort which is exercised by the salver in preventing or minimizing the damage to environment. Then what is the measure of success? Are you able to recover the ship with the cargo or only cargo or only ship and the cargo has been, you, you may not have uh, uh, solved the entire cargo. Some of the cargo might have got damaged in during the salvage and before the salvage. So uh, what is the amount, what is the measure of success you have obtained? Then when a salver goes for a salvage operation, he also looks into various other factors. What will be his profit? What is the risk involved, etc. So one of the things which he will uh, definitely consider is what is the nature and degree of danger? Is it bad weather? Is it uh, reduced visibility? Is it uh, the ice uh, uh, dominated area? So all those things will decide what is the kind of danger, what kind of ship, what kind of cargo it is carrying. So nature and degree of danger is also very important when we are considering the reward by article 13. Then skill and effort. One we have seen skill and effort for the preventing of pollution. Now this is skill and effort in solving the property, solving the ship. What is the skill? What is the effort that is exercised by the solver? Then of course, the time and expenses. What kind of expenses you have incurred? What kind of uh, 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 the gang you have used? How many uh, uh, tugboats? How many pilots, divers? What equipment you have used? And how much time it has taken? Was it a difficult salvage or a, a normal salvage? Right? Another factor which is considered is like risk of liabilities. Like any other ship, they also run the liabilities. They are also responsible for uh, environmental pollution or uh, their role in preventing the pollution. Or maybe they have done something wrong which will incur more liability, more damage. So they are also exposed to this liabilities which uh, the normal ships are exposed to. So what kind of risk they run, what kind of liabilities are likely to be expected. Now last three factors are in respect of the speed I would say. Now the promptness of the service. How prompt you were. Now the service that is provided by you was with what promptness. I mean you were informed and you immediately agreed to come forward you immediately agreed to solve. So uh, uh, how fast you came to the scene. So the promptness is uh, an important factor. And then availability and use of the other vessels and the equipment and the readiness of the equipment of the, and the readiness of the equipment and the vessel. So these are the factors uh, which have to be considered under article 13 to decide what is the reward. Sometimes they say if this agreement is not signed what happens one gets the salvage or not so please remember from the ancient times ancient time of uh, uh, maritime business the salvage always has been there salvage is a fundamental uh, maritime right there was a case in admiralty court uh, the case was like a master did not want the help from a tug and tug uh, master always uh, was after the master that you better take the help because the weather is going to deteriorate and you might run aground. So it seems the lines were not connected, you know, uh, but the court said that even if the lines were not connected, even if the ship did not run aground, right, 
uh, any sensible master, right, uh, who would uh, look at the situation in a fair manner would ask for the Turk's help. So, court awarded the uh, salvage. Sometimes you might be stuck in the ice and uh, you might require the help from some other ship and you just call up on VHF. Any ship, I'm in this position, can you guide me, which is the way out, right? So, uh, uh, randomly some ship answers and he says that uh, you proceed in 063 direction, 063 degrees direction and you proceed for two miles, you will get open waters. Thank you, sir. Now there is acknowledgement, there is conversation. On a future date, the uh, ship who uh, extended his cooperation, help, etc., guided you to come out of the ice field might demand the salvage. Like there was another situation where a ship was uh, running into, uh, you know, shallows and uh, without the knowledge of the master, there was a tug which pushed the ship into deep waters. That tug was awarded the salvage. Now the thing is, uh, in such situation, a sensibly uh, thinking master who looks at pros and cons of the situation, he would require the assistant or not. That is the criteria. Another criteria which is there, whether there is danger or there is no danger. The danger should not be imaginary. Danger should not be on the paper. Danger should be actual danger that is felt by the ship. A very usual question asked. Uh, in respect of salvages, can the towage contract get converted into salvage contract? So as I said, towage contract is a contract whereby there has to be transparency of the things. There has to be non-concealment of the facts, non-concealment of the material facts. So that means utmost good faith. But if the ship owner hides certain facts, hides certain facts in respect of say, um, the bottom is actually damaged, the double bottom is damaged and you do not disclose the fact. Or there is some other technical problem on the ship which, which uh, should have been told to the, uh, the towage company you did not tell. You just said that the ship is in ballast, there is no cargo and my hull is intact. But if it so happens that later on during the voyage the tug company realizes that there was some material fact, you know, material fact which was concealed. Then in one particular case which went to the court, they said that the salvage will be executed right from the beginning of the operation. Right from the first day, it would be considered as a salvage contract. That means whatever money you have decided will not hold good. but. Uh, the amount to be paid to the towage company will be decided by the salvage convention 89 article 13. Another situation is uh, uh, when a ship is uh, engaged in a towage operation. Subsequently during the voyage something happens in such a way that ship is not any more of the type that is described in the initial stage. Initially the ship was described as a sound ship, the sound hull, everything uh, was normal and subsequently say fire took place, some other emergency took place and because of which the ship as described earlier is not there anymore. So from that moment onwards the towage company person, the towage contractor would consider this as a salvage operation. So he has a right to uh, enforce the salvage contract here onwards. Another very important fact that we must understand is a master cannot or the crew cannot uh, say that uh, the ship went through extreme bad weather and they cannot demand salvage for the own ship because you have predetermined duties in respect of taking care of your ship. Same way a pilot in English channel cannot say that throughout there was restricted visibility and the weather became extremely bad and I prevented the ship from running aground and therefore I should be given salvage. He will not be paid salvage. Whereas if the captain and the crew of any ship, if they go for salvaging some other ship, then they can demand salvage. So the salvage they have earned, like their salary, cannot be 
uh, cancelled on any account. The company cannot say that we are not earning freight this year, this month, so we will not pay salaries. It is their uh, fundamental right. It is their admiralty right, maritime right to get the salvage. Now, how the salvage will be apportioned between the people will depend on the flag state rules. The flag state says that the master should get so much, the, the uh, crew member should get so much, then it will be decided accordingly. Sometimes uh, there is this point raised in respect of increased uh, security. What is this increased security? So it seems uh, uh, looking at the salvage conditions, looking at the various conditions, if the salver and the ship owner, they want to have a mutual agreement in respect of uh, decreasing that $3 million security or increasing the $3 million uh, security. Decreasing will be uh, offered by the ship owner and increasing of the security by the salver. Or sometimes there might be, uh, if there is no mutual agreement, sometimes the arbitrator might be involved and they decide that the security should be increased, say, to $4 million. So while your uh, uh, scopic is already underway, if the salver demands the increased security, that is extra uh, $1 million, and the ship owner does not deposit the extra increased security in the bank, then the salver has got power to terminate the entire salvage contract. So this is the first time the salver has got the independent uh, 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 decision uh, possibility in respect of cancelling the whole contract. Earlier, if the security was not paid, he could only withdraw from the Scopic and he would fall back on the special compensation article 14, right? But now with the recent amendment, with the recent amendment, if the increased security is not paid by the ship owner in two working days, then the salver has got powers to withdraw from the entire salvage contract. The ship owner may refuse to pay scopic or he may uh, not want to go for scopic once the scopic clause is invoked. But for this, he will have to give five clear day notice. Let us uh, consider the salvage in uh, two parts, one when uh, there is cure and one when there is no cure. In both the situations, whether there is success or there is no success, it is possible that you have invoked scopic you have not invoked. Now when the scopic is not invoked, you are depending on article 13 or article 14. Let us say, uh, what happens is when you have not invoked the scopic, the environmental and coastal consideration not satisfied. Then what happens, you have not invoked scopic and you are not satisfying these uh, conditions, then what happens is article 14 is out. And while you have not invoked the scopic and these conditions, that is two conditions are satisfied, then article 14 is in. So here is a situation where you have satisfied the two conditions and uh, therefore article uh, 14 is in. Whereas if you had not satisfied environmental and coastal conditions, then article 14 would not be given. Now once again, when article 14 is in, there is a possibility that article 13 reward is more than article 14. Or it may so happen that article 13 is less than article 14. 
So when article 13 is more than article 14, you don't talk about article 14 because article 13 will be paid by the cargo interest as well as the ship's interest. Ship interest and cargo interest are paying article 13 and that suffices. You don't have to worry about article 14 because it is less than article 13. Now what happens when article 13 is less than article 14? Article 13 as usual is contributed by the cargo interest and the ship interest and whatever is the overflow, whatever is the difference of article 14 and article 13 will be exclusively paid by the ship owner. Let us now consider this situation where Scopic is invoked and once again you can have two possibilities when article 13 is uh, more than Scopic and another situation is when article 13 is less than Scopic. First let us consider this situation where article 13 is less than Scopic. The course of action would be same as we have dealt here. Uh, in absence of scopic what happens is article 13 is paid by the cargo interest and the ship interest right? because the property that is served belongs to both of them and whatever is the overflow that means whatever is the difference between scopic and article 13 will be exclusively paid by the ship owner or his pni club now let's look at this situation article 13 is more than scopic now this would be possible when you have served a very large tanker, a lot of property and article 13 accounts for a lot of uh, money that is big reward. Now, uh, Scopic, let us say uh, a Scopic is um, uh, a smaller amount and uh, Scopic which you consider here has to be considered as if the Scopic was on right from the first day. right? Uh, like in this situation, if the Scopic is called on the last day, no. Uh, Scopic, you have to assume that Scopic is called right on the first day and that Scopic is less than Article 13. Then the rule here is the difference of the two, Article 13 and Scopic, is discounted by 25%. That means you pay, uh, whatever is the difference, you pay 75% of that plus Scopic. All that money that is the discounted amount that is the difference multiplied by 0.75 plus the scopic amount will be paid by ship interest and cargo interest separately uh, you don't have to deal with the scopic right so this is the reason where sometimes uh, salver may not want to go for uh, scopic where he is very confident that he is going to get the success now let's come on this side when there is no cure now when there is no cure, typically the age-old uh, slogan is no cure, no pay. But here uh, we have two situations where Scopic is in or Scopic is not in. When Scopic is not in, that means we are talking about Article 14. Environmental conditions and coastal con conditions satisfied. First of all, we must understand when there is no cure, Article 13 out. When Scopic is not invoked, the only uh, thing to uh, bank on, only thing to bank on is Article 14. But environmental consideration and coastal considerations are satisfied, you get the money from Article 14. But when not satisfied. Now this is the situation when Scopic is not invoked and uh, environmental and coastal conditions are not satisfied. Salver does not get anything even in today's time. Let's look at other situation where the Scopic is invoked. There is no success. So this is straightforward. You get the Scopic amount. So uh, this is uh, a flow chart, this is a chart uh, which in brief will tell you like uh, in which situation the salver is supposed to get uh, how much. Now in this situation where there is no cure and scopic is invoked, the entire scopic amount will be paid by owner's p &I club and here also where scopic is not invoked and there is no cure, the article 14 amount will be paid 
by the ship interest or the PNI club. Let us look at some amendments or changes which have happened to uh, the system, the LOF. Uh, as I told you earlier that this Lloyd's open form, you know, uh, has various boxes. We talked about box number two, three and seven. And in the lower part, you have uh, these special notices. Earlier, there were only two notices, but with effect from 2011, LOF 2011, you had this notice number three and four. As per notice number three, the Council of Lloyds is allowed to publish the awards. Earlier, the publication of the award was not allowed. I mean, you could not do it, but now on the website, on the own website, you can declare, you can publish the award after the publication, after 21 days of publication of or decision of the award, you can publish it on your website. Now, what is the special notice for? Special notice for is in respect of notifying or informing the Council of Lloyds by the salver that he has undertaken a salvage operation. Now the amendments have given uh, increased powers to arbitrators. Earlier, traditionally, you know, the money used to not come directly to the arbitrators. And sometimes the form in which they used to get remuneration was not acceptable to the arbitrators. Now the arbitrators have discretion to decide what uh, uh, fees they are going to charge and what is the format in which various formalities will be done and also the format in which they will get the money. Another amendment is in respect of the container vessels. As you know container vessels uh, they might be having thousands, several thousands of uh, consigners. Uh, how to reach all of them? So the amendment said that in case you want to give the notice of arbitration, when arbitrator comes into picture, you have to give notice of arbitration to naturally to the stakeholders. You need not give, you need not give, of course, the people are not directly the cargo owners. Typically they are the cargo insurers, but you need not give the notice of arbitration to those people who have not provided the security. Right. So uh, you need to give notice of arbitration only to the people who have represented themselves by paying the appropriate security. Another amendment uh, in respect of containership was like uh, if 75% of the salt value, you have a settlement with them, then that was sufficient to decide a settlement. Another amendment in the similar situation was like in case a cargo had a salt value less than stipulated, less than a specified amount, then uh, that uh, uh, amount uh, need not be taken into salvage fund. On 1st January 2020, Lodge uh, Salvage Arbitration Branch, they launched a new form, new standard form that is LOF 2020 and uh, it uh, incorporated several changes. So one of such changes was old arbitration clauses and procedural rules, which were two different documents. They were combined into one. Another important amendment was inclusion of the concept of FCAP, fixed cost arbitration procedure. As for this FCAP concept, the cases could be divided in two categories. One is uh, the cases of more than two million dollars, you know, which are straightforward, you know. So FCAP could be applied to those cases and other cases which are of less than two million dollars, uh, which are complicated. The arbitration, full scale arbitration could be awarded to those cases. So those cases would be uh, dealt by the arbitrators. Another very important amendment can be seen in clause H that is the deemed performance. Deemed performance clarifies as to uh, what is the condition in which the ship can be re-delivered. As per this, the ship can even be re-delivered in damaged condition provided uh, the salvers are not required to hold on to the ship as per the port requirement or for the formalities or continued attendance of salvage services is not required anymore. So it would be considered as deemed performance. Now overall effect of these amendments can be understood as follows. Like number one, increased accountability and control of uh, Council of Lloyds and 
increased discretionary powers of arbitrators. Now, arbitrators earlier, they uh, did not get the money directly. It was channelized through the salvers and sometimes the vomit would not be appropriate. So now there is clause 4.5 which says that the form and format of the security by the cargo interests can be decided by the arbitrators. Another clause 5 meant that the security in respect of the expenditure by the arbitrators or the fees that would be charged by the arbitrators, the security for that uh, would be decided by the arbitrators. Clause 6 talks about arbitrators powers. So it says that in addition to the powers which are confirmed by Arbitration Act of 1996 following additional powers will be observed or enjoyed by the arbitrators. So uh, they have power to admit uh, the evidence in form of document, documentary or verbal or whatever format they want. So uh, it is under their discretion. They have powers to conduct arbitration in the manner they feel fit but subject to LSAC 2020. They have power to direct that the cost in respect of uh, the arbitration etc would be limited by a fixed amount. They also have power to conduct the meeting over telephone or conference as uh, they feel convenient but subject to the approval of the parties. Under his own discretion or after the application by the parties, he can change the award amount or in 56 days of publication, the award amount can be increased. Clause 14 is special cargo provisions like Clause 13, 14, 15 of old Lloyd Standard Salvage Agreement. They were combined into one. Once again, it gave increased discretionary power and it dealt with the cases of unrepresented cargo interest like the salvage award which can be placed against them. Under this new system, uh, this clause 19 which talks about the contractor's special right to terminate. This was not there earlier. Like uh, uh, earlier I talked about the increased security. If the increased security was not paid by the ship owner within two working days then the salver had powers to uh, withdraw from the entire salvage contract. So that was the technical and legal story of salvage. I hope uh, I have made my point and I hope uh, you have enjoyed the lecture. Thank you.